Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to debug a C application that is running on one of the Cortex A9 processors of the Zinc FPGA. I'm going to use Vitus, which is Eclipse based. So, first thing is you have to connect your pink board or another Zinc FPGA board and you have to boot Vitus. I'm using Vitus Classic version 2023.2. So it's launching. So I'm making this tutorial because I see a lot of students just debugging using printf commands. In this way, you're not using the full potential of the Vitus IDE, which is based on Eclipse technology. You can do a lot of a lot more to debug your C application. So first thing, you launch your workspace. Workspace. Okay. So I'm going to fix this screen. You can select window, reset perspective. Then you have this. Um, in the right corner, you can hit the design button. This is where you're mainly developing your C code. So here you're programming. When you're going to debug, you start the debug session. Be sure to connect your board, then you can hit the right mouse button. You can select debug and then you can launch on hardware. I already made a single application debug session. so. I will click on it. It will launch my debug window. It will program the FPGA like this. And then you're in this screen. So I'm going to move some things around. Okay, so what I see that a lot of students are doing is just using printf for their debugging you connect your vita serial terminal you select the port which the board is connected to i think it was com6 so and then you can just run the application and then it will for instance print something but when you have a failure in your code uh, you, need to, you, need, you need to debug more in depth in your code. For this, you can, for instance, uh, when you relaunch your application, okay, it's nothing. This is because I didn't. Um, De disconnect the board. So I'm just setting up a new debug session. What you can do is put some breakpoints in your code. So you can, for instance, over here you double click, over here you double click, and then when you run your code, it will break. It will stop, it will pause on this line of code. Um, when you want to okay, uh, when you want to view the value that is in a variable, you can add it to the expressions. So for instance, If you want in your code um, and you want to monitor the test output, for instance, you can do a right mouse click, add watch expression, then you put the variable name and it will be added to the expressions screen. If you don't have this screen, you can look for it in this environment. Here is the expressions and it will be added this window okay you start 
again and then you see it's running up the code until line 39 in uh, line 39 I do a call to a function um, what you can do is if you hover over a variable you see already a lot of information for instance here you see the max value in this screen you see the address in memory of this variable you can copy it and when you go to this top memory you can look for this location in memory and then it will show you the content of this variable for instance max value has um, this value uh, it is in, in, in on this address uh, and it has a very small value inside of it see here the binary value and the hexadecimal value and you see in the memory explorer you see this value on this address okay if you want to render it to for instance floating point you can add a render and then you see that this value uh, 309 309 Uh, zero 08 okay it's here it's infinity so um, it's a zero value over there okay if you go further in this debug session you can go to the next line then you see it will break again on a breakpoint and like that okay you also see that uh, this memory address has a new value if you hover or uh, on this you see it's uh, three th uh, three two seven here you see it's three two seven e two so it's multiplied by 100 and uh, here we can see the this value uh, again in the memory okay so okay for this um i will disconnect my debug session and i will reconnect it again you can do a lot more for instance you can view the assembler code you can view the processor registers um, I will show you how to do that one so if you click on this application processing unit you see on the right side um, you see the registers of this uh, application processing unit you see for instance the axi bus which is available but, but in this design I didn't have um, custom axi IP course integrated you see some other things around you see for instance the UART which is available the USB connections the axi GPIO blocks that I added in my Vivado uh, you see the level 2 cache that's available all the all the memory addresses and the content of it but if you click on the ARM Cortex A9 core, you are really connected to one of the two cores that is available in this application processing unit. And here you see the uh, 30, 13 uh, registers that are available in this ARM Cortex A9 family. You can also go to the VFP, which is the floating point unit, which is enabled. In this environment and he here you see the content of the uh, 16q registers uh, that are used for floating point um, calculations you see the level 2 cache registers the program counter and stuff like that what you can do is you can watch the assembly code so if you go to window uh, you look for let me see this assembly here you see the assembler code. 
what you can do is uh, just uh, put it over here. In this window, this is the assem assembler code. Here we can also add some breakpoints. So for instance, if you want um, to have a breakpoint over here, you just, uh, let me see, you just, you can double click on this line. This line here, there is a move instruction, which means that the contents of register air three will be copied to register R2. If I start my debug session, I will disable these breakpoints. I will run and you see it just stops on this line, the move instruction where we copy the value of R3 to R2. What we can do is if we watch the registers. So before this line in R2, there is the value of 1,800. In R3, there's 1024. Um, if I add a breakpoint in the assembly some further, so I will add one over here. I run the code, so the value of R3 must go into R2. So if I run this and I watch back, the value of R3, the 1024, is now also in register R2. So this is very low level uh, programming stuff. Here you can watch the registers do their stuff. The PC is the program counter and things like that. So this, the move is a move instruction where you, uh, you put some value uh, in another register. Okay. So. Here we can watch everything go. Um, uh, we've seen that you can put the variables. Um, so you can add a certain valuable va variable to the watch expressions. Um, if you run the code, you see at this point there is uh, nothing in this test output. If you run the code, you can already watch the values go, okay? If you want, you can even, um, if you go to the memory, for instance, if you uh, have this test output, um, here there is the address. What you can do is you just select it, um, you add it to the memory um, browser. For, oh, let me see if I did it. Okay, I didn't do it the right way. I have to select this, Control C, add this up. What I can do is I can export it. So this is the start address. You can add uh, the length, for instance, 1024 byte. And then I can export it as plain text on, for instance, this location. Okay, if I then open this file, okay, it was somewhere mem dot dot dot. Oh, okay, this is, is that now? Okay, um, here you see the content of this mem data punt dot file, and here you see the uh, 55E4B224 is this one. Okay, uh, there is the uh, so we can the onion is if we replace it, then it's in the right order if you want to fix that already. So you see, and this uh, wh when you're storing, for instance, the result of an FFT, you can now plot make a plot in uh, software like uh, Excel or uh, a Python script to parse this content and then make a nice plot of the values that are in your uh, memory of your processor to debug it further. Okay, so uh, let's summarize some things. Uh, you can do debugging by using just the printf commands in your code. Uh, you can also go more in-depth by using step-by-step -step debugging. So you do 
steps in your code and then you can watch the variables go and change. You can do the memory viewer, the memory browser in your Vitus IDE. You can watch the assembler code go if there is a, a strange uh, thing going on. You can add breakpoints in the assembler code or in your C code. Um, yeah, that's all, I suppose. Happy debugging. I hope this uh, presentation was helpful for you guys. Bye.